It is July 7th, 2017, and I am selling this 87 Chevy van G30. That is a short school bus with a small block engine uh, with a little under 90,000 miles on it. And I'm going to go around this and show you its features here. So as I said, it is a Chevy van G30. Uh, you can barely see on here, it says 87. It is uh, 10,000 pounds in weight. And uh, let's see here, we're gonna come right in here, take a look at the mileage. You can see the mileage there, 83, 282. Okay, now I'm gonna park this in here. Just to let you know that it starts up like a champ. I just recently got a new small block engine into it. It's maybe 6,000 miles old. And as you can see, that this thing purrs like a kitten for what it is. I'm not going to keep it running, but uh, we'll work on it in just a bit there. Okay. Now, I'm going to show off. Get those later. Show off the battery bank here. Now, I don't think this battery is good anymore, so that might need to be replaced. But ultimately, you can put three batteries in here and put the converter inside if you wanted to. I do have a port on the inside. This thing does slide out. Uh, this is the converter, so <clears throat> it just all depends. Now, this converter here can charge the battery while you are on shore power. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be using the batteries with the inverter inside to use that power. But uh, again, you have uh, all of this cordage to work with. Uh, this is a plug that goes to the other side of <clears throat> the bus. Excuse me. This one goes directly above up here. And then this one goes to the converter, which the converter will, like I said before, will uh, charge that battery. But it probably is dead at this point. <clears throat> so... There's that. I did install a uh, water inlet. There's no pump or reservoir inside, so there's no clean water uh, inside to do a dry camping. So you'll have to um, fashion that yourself, or when you're parked, you'll need to use power and water, and everything should be fine uses unleaded gas, nothing fancy there. Um, I do believe I have registration up to 2015, maybe 16, but uh, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I did this uh, custom install for this uh, spare tire mount and it's been doing quite well. All right, one of the things I wanna point out is these little guys here, they're actually for a tent pull apparatus so that you can put um, uh, tarps fixes uh, over the windows and it provides a little bit of shade and as you can see that I have uh, egress windows here there's two per side so four total uh, and uh, these can open up for ventilation if you want and I do have some screens that you can put over there with some magnets this is the bus's radiator for the AC unit I've never got it cold but it does run air so uh, it just blows air and that's about it <clears throat> we're going to get into the bus here in just a moment i'm going to point out one more thing i do have a small animal pet door here i used it for a cat when i was living in it as you can see it does have a uh, closing locking door there so if you have a small animal that might be uh, ideal for you guys there now uh this little bit here i noticed kind of fell off over my travels um these Chevy G30 vans are a dime a dozen at scrapyards. You could probably get that in paint match, whatever it is. And it looks like it's just a small corner piece here that's easy to uh, replace. Okay, let's go inside show you the big reveal. And here it is. This is the bus. Uh, so sorry. It's so jittery. I didn't mean to do that. Oh. And as you can see, 
I've done quite a bit to it because it used to have nothing but seats in it. I will show off everything as we are... Uh, I just dropped the my pointer. Oh well. So as you can see, I've done quite a bit in here. I will show off every bit of amenity as I go along. As you can see, I have my computer set up because there is a computer monitor over there and I will show more of those features in just a moment. Let's go up to the front here. So, I have right here, which is the main entrance, this guy right up here is a screen. So you can actually bring that down if you want a little bit of a breeze uh, and that'll kind of keep some of the insects out. Uh, this is a blackout curtain. All of my windows have blackout curtains and then I also have um, a uh, one of those dash visors as well here and I'll show you that with all the accessories that I have alright eh, fire extinguisher you don't need to know about that alright this here is the stereo it is nothing fancy no frills I don't even think it uh, keeps any of the um, radio station presets I think uh, the internal battery needs to be fixed or replaced or whatever uh, there's a cigarette adapter in here and I do not recommend using it unless the vehicle is on because that will drain the main battery okay uh, I wanted to point out that this guy was a little wiggly um, and it still operates and functions all of the uh, apparatus that goes from the steering wheel down to the wheels all that uh, is properly uh, affixed but it's just this one little spot up here that's kind of wobbly so um, it was something I was going to fix. Let's see here I'm going to pull back just a little bit. <clears throat> this is the front. I've got uh, Sony Explodes. They are six by nines, three ways. I have got four of them in here total, two in the front, two in the back. Uh, I do not have one of them attached in the back just because I was doing all of the uh, carpeting in the overhead and there's just no place to put it anymore. Uh, this is a 21 or 23 inch Westinghouse, I believe it's a 1080 um, P, so there's that. The Wii that I have sitting here might be a part of the deal or not, just depending. Uh, everything's negotiable. This is the base for the TV. Let's see here, what else do we need to do? This panel back here has a bunch of fuses, so it's just a matter of getting these two screws off and open it up. Um, I do have a, the glass tube style fuses in here, and there's a bank that works with everything up here towards the front, and then there's a bank that works with everything towards the back. I don't have anything labeled, unfortunately. Um, I wasn't that OCD when I made it. So, um, there are fuses back there, and then of course the the vehicle itself has fuses underneath there where the uh, underneath where the brake is. Okay, let's see here. What else? What else? What else? Let's start here. So I've got the overhead compartments. You see, I've got them all nice and carpet lined. Um, they can store everything you can think of. I had bedding up here. I had clothes up here. I had all of my dishes up there. I had paperwork up there. There's so much room in this bus. You cannot believe it. Uh, more coat hanger kind of stuff here. Uh, this guy here, which is the main closet, so spacious. I'd have to say that's maybe about uh, six, eight inches, somewhere around there. And you can see we've got the coat hanger rack right there, the dowel. And then I've just got a room in here and I do have smaller dust pans and whatnot. Okay. I am adding this to part of the bus here. This is just a um, weather predictor. It says the future forecast is going to be raining tomorrow. I don't know if that's going to be true or not. We'll find out. And you can see inside temperature, outside temperature. And my outside temperature uh, is regulated by a thermometer that is behind the spare tire. This is the sink area. Uh, this is connected straight into the water inlet so it's nothing fancy. Uh, and of course it'll drain out and wait it will drain out. 
is with that little white hose in there. That white hose will feed through this hole, and then there's another hole towards the bottom, and then I have a gray water reservoir tank in there. You can see that there's plenty of room in there to put a uh, refrigerator unit, a uh, smaller one. One of those, uh, I guess Norcold makes them, Coleman makes them. There's all sorts of um, guys that you can put in there. Okay. Now I am going to show off the couch and or couches because you could see that I have them on either side of the bus. They will comfortably sit three apiece facing each other. And the cool thing about these couches and this might be a challenge doing one-handed, so I apologize if this is a little more. So you can see that lays down. A little bit of a gap, but fortunately that is right where your knees and or shoulders will sit. And this guy does the exact same. Oh. All right, and I'll get out of the way. Oh, there it is. So, as you can see, that is about a queen size. And that is a rather large bed for two. And again, there's a little bit of a gap going across everything. But as I laid down, and I'm about 6'2", each gap hits either your shoulders, your hips, or your knees. So, um, whether you are concerned about that or not, um, that is a feature, if you ask me, because I often do not like waking up with my arm falling asleep. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna put this back where it was. Same thing with this one here. And let's move on. Now this is the vanity. And you can see that I have these little guys set up to hold it closed while you're in travel. So those will sit down and off to the sides while you're stationary. And as you open up, and I just put a few things in there just so you can see what it does and what it is. And look, there's the mirror. The mirror's on the inside so that you can open it up and do what you need to do. Rather than having a mirror on the outside and trying to figure out what you're doing with your life while you're sitting here uh, getting ready for the morning with the sink all awkwardly off to the side. There is a small little, um, oh, it's not working because the batteries are dead. Um, this is completely independent outside of any of the battery system that's here. So you put batteries in this and you'll still have something to turn on and off if you really need to. Uh, one of the cool features that I did is underneath the overheads, and you can see these little hockey puck looking guys, well they turn on and off as is, but these usually use batteries. And what I ended up doing is rewired them so that they run off a of 12 volt. So this guy goes to the battery down below, and now it runs off of that battery instead of double A's or triple A's. Not too shabby, huh? All right, um, let's see. Let's let's go back over here again. And we'll come over to this little section here. I just realized that fan has been on the whole time. That is a fantastic fan, fantastic vent. I can't remember the name of it. But it has uh, a temperature gauge that will turn on if it gets too hot, too cold, whatever. It does uh, blow and exhaust, and it has three different functions here. I'm going to keep this off for the rest of the the presentation here because uh, that's it's just extra noise we don't need. Okay, coming back. This is a 30 inch by 40 inch shower pan or you can make it into a shower pan. I have left this open so that you can put a composting toilet in here as there's that other speaker I was talking about, the third of four. Now, this also has an egress here, so you can open that up. Uh, now, it is to say that this can be made into a shower unit. You can get one of those propane 
heater guys and there is enough ventilation in here to open that up and to have this going and you can have yourself a nice little shower you just need some propane and you need a little thing to hang it up maybe right about here or so and then you need to get all the, the uh, plastic waterproofing into this little area I have not done that because wherever I went there was a shower room and I just had a composting toilet down here and I will leave you to get your own because uh, I'm gonna be using mine still but again I had this for privacy uh, not very private but uh, you get the idea it's enough and you can always get an opaque shower curtain if you'd like but just to, just to know that is a standard size shower curtain all right this is the AC unit that I was talking about that blows air but does not blow cold air and I have not gotten it worked on I have not worked on it I have not tried to fix it and I'm leaving it as is uh, all of these little guys down here, these are magnets, and these are the magnets that I use to put all of these screens on the windows, so whenever I open up the windows, that uh, I can put screens on there and keep all the bugs out. Uh, let's see here, I've got this little magnifying lens here, so you can kind of see when you're backing up, and it does the backup beeping noise, which is kind of cool. All right, and I wanted to show off the spare the spare monitor right here, as you can kind of see, it works just fine. Uh, let's see here. I'll just pop something on just so things. All right, so after two and a half hour drive, half hour traffic. Cool. We're not going to watch that guy. We're not going to cross promote today. All right. As you can see, it works just fine. Now, the Apple that I have has an adapter to a DVI, and this thing runs off of a DVI, and it has some extra USB and uh, old school FireWire, if you're familiar with that. Anyways, that is what that is, and I can turn that off. <clears throat> now, the other feature that I want to show is that this scopes back, parks here. I have some bungee cords underneath here that attach to these guys over here to keep it secure while you're traveling. And I'm going to show off the table as I bump my head. Now this table was taken out of an Airstream and the guy that put in the new engine for me, he gave this to me as kind of a gift because I did so much work on my bus with him. But that is what that is. I did some nice little trim on it, and you can see some of the cords and cables. Uh, I made that bracing there, and let's see here. Oh, there's a subwoofer there for the stereo system, so you've got tunes when you're driving along, as this thing does get a little um, loud. Let's see here, I've got the, um, those aren't road flares, those are the triangle reflective things, and they're heavy with the heavy rubber bottom. So, those are there, they exist. These were the original seats from the bus, so you can imagine a whole bunch of these seating about 18 people in this bus. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it on the interior. That's some more of the blackout curtains. All of those are ties, so you can tie them up if you want. You can see this wire that's running all the way towards the front and the back. And I do have a um, little tensioner, so you can tighten those up if you need to. I'll show off the overhead compartments. There's the fourth speaker it is not attached it is just sitting there as you can see that's all of the carpeted area yeah there's some gaps in here it's all homegrown here I'm not a professional and uh, as you could see you know there's little spots here and there that aren't perfect but uh, uh, definitely served its purpose I lived out of it for a whole year okay here is a feature I want to show off. Now, this does not have any locks for the rear, and it doesn't have any locks for the main entrance. So what I did is I got a padlock. This unlocks and locks back up onto this handle, and that handle cannot move up. I have tried and tried, and even on the inside where you have more leverage than you do on the outside, it won't open. So, But that opens like so. And this is another area that you have. I also have a stool that I was going to make that will 
be parked here. Um, it's just a matter of putting wood on the top of the frame. But uh, that's that. And as you can see, this guy here, this is really difficult to try to move when the lock is on the other side. And if you look really close here, there's yellow paint. So this thing has had yellow paint and it's had white paint and now it's got blue with silver trim. And you can kind of see what that looks like there. Cool. All right. Now, let's do one more thing here. I'm going to show off how I lock the main door and see how fun that is right there. That comes here. And then this guy, again, it's another lock. Uh, these keys will be coming with the bus. And there's also a lock on the gas cap because this thing does carry a bunch of gas. So having someone thieve gas off of you pr probably not be the best situation. So this locks this guy up really nice. The other one locks the back door up really nice. So all that you have to do is worry about this guy here. So there's that. All right, I'm gonna show off the additional things that I'm putting in the bus so that you're not with a completely empty vehicle. So first and foremost, AC unit. If you are hooked up to a power source, you can let this thing fly. This fits perfectly into one of those emergency windows and then with that strap right there, you can actually strap it on and to the window. I've got pictures of that. And then this guy right here fits up perfectly on the top half of where the AC unit sits so that this and this close off that window quite well. And then, of course, this, I just haven't peeled any of this off. I mean, you could see that that's a nice bit of uh, plexiglass that you're not going to have to worry about scratches on it because... I haven't even bothered taking that off. This is a gray water tank here. And this here, you just kind of open up that little thing that says Thetford on it. And uh, you put that underneath where the battery bank is. And that is also where the drain is for the gray water. And then uh, you can use that and then haul that off when you need to. All right. This guy right here has got a whole bunch of goodies in here. You can see the visor for the bus here, but then I've got a whole bunch of this um, foil bubble wrap here. And this is also to be put on with this up front. Now this up front has a nice foil on the front. It's got a foam on the inside. It's some insulation. And then this can actually provide some more insulation. And this is really good for blackouts, uh, blacking out the whole thing. And, I, and uh, these are all the screens that you're going to need. One, two, three, four. That's for all four of those emergency windows. And then again, you just use those magnets to put them together. These are the tent poles I was talking about that you can put up the awnings on the sides of the bus. It's not much. You'd probably have to buy your own tarps as the previous ones weren't very good looking I tossed them but uh, I've got an apparatus it's got some bungees and it's got some rope and everything and you can get that all set up really nice if you're gonna be there for a little while let's see here uh, I'm gonna go back into this box here along with this box you can see that I've got a whole bunch of seat belts and I left these seat belts with you just in case you wanted to try to put seat belts on the couch um, or if something uh, like one of the seat belts was getting damaged or something. You can go ahead and replace that. Uh, this is a panel that was up front, uh, kind of where the engine sits uh, to the right of the doghouse when you're inside the bus. And I just pulled it off, but it's still there. A uh, little bit of a dust pan and whatnot. This is the kind of oil that I've been putting into it. It's a castrol. And then here's a hose so you can get into the oil thing. And just a little bit of coolant. And then let's see here, last but not least, underneath right here, and I don't know if you could see that or not, but it says Chilton's. So that is the book for the bus. And uh, that uh, I had to search for it. And uh, thank goodness I found it. And uh, I'm going to pass that along with the bus. There's no reason to hold on to it. Okay. In here, 
is paint. That matches everything that's on the inside. It's maybe about two thirds full. Figured if you want to put another coat or anything, you can have at it. Um, this is the center console. I will clean all this out because you know these are these are my toys. You can't have them. Um, but again, everything is negotiable. So the pirate might come with the bus. The monkey might come with the bus. The baboon definitely goes with the bus because uh, he's hanging out in there already. Uh, but as you can see, oh, and I've got a small GPS in here. But as you can see, this can sit on the ground in front of the doghouse, and these are decent cup holders. All right. I also have um, a Coleman. It's a bottle propane burner. I'm going to keep that with you guys as well, just so you can cook on the inside if you need to. Here's a hose that you can use for the inlet. And again, there's that um, filter. So that will be filtered, and that should be plenty to drink. This is a nice little uh, grill you can use on the outside. And it's a little, it's a little beat up here, but it works all the same. I've used it before and it does quite well. And then this is a nice little hose for the propane so you can not have it set up right on the uh, bit right here. Cause I don't think that that's a uh, very good design. And also, I've got a bunch of pots and pans, various miscellaneous stuff, and silverware, and a bunch of plates and Tupperware and whatnot, and some cups, and then uh, a few of these guys as well. They are kind of like these fork spoon things that I put in there with it. And I believe that is about it. Uh, one more thing about the bus. The engine was replaced about 6,000 miles ago, as was the drive line, as was the rear axle, as was the, uh, the, the exhaust from, boy, I guess uh, just past the headers. So from, you know, including the catalytic converter muffler and whatnot. Uh, so that's brand new as well. The radiator, is about 6,000 miles old. Uh, it had a brake job about 6,000 miles ago as well. Uh, pretty much I did a lot of work on it um, at about that time. So uh, everything that's running underneath it um, is practically brand new. So that's the bus. Thank you for watching.